Hi there. Welcome to Music Corner, Symphonizing Project Episode 16. I'm David Kulma, and here we are. I'm continuing with uh, Tchaikovsky, Tchaikovsky 4 and Brahms 2 here in the first hour today. This is probably the last day I'll spend with these two. It's a Thursday. Well, maybe I'll do tomorrow. I haven't decided yet. And then um, in the second hour, we're doing continuing the bar by bar analysis of Beethoven 1. So I'll be, we're getting near the end of the exposition. So more to do. In the meantime, I, uh, I, was, I decided to start with just openings of the one of the middle movements today of the Tchaikovsky and the Brahms. And it didn't occur to me until after I'd chosen them that I had picked two oboe solo excerpts that I've played many times, uh, which I just find humorous. Just practicing. I've actually never performed either of these symphonies playing the first oboe part. Um, so it's me sitting in a small room by myself playing the oboe. That's that's what it is. So the uh, so we're just gonna take a look at the openings of two um, middle movements. So the Tchaikovsky, uh, the slow movement, which starts with this oboe solo here, and then the uh, third movement, which is sort of the plays the role of the scherzo movement in Brahms' uh, second symphony. Um, uh, I'll talk more about that later. So, Tchaikovsky. So we open with just uh, after the big loud F minor ending of the previous movement, F minor key signature, Fs, 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 Fs. Those are all Fs. Are there any A flats? There are in this measure. A flats and Cs, so F minor. And then we move on. And it opens in B flat minor. B flat minor. Which for the in the key of the whole symphony, this would be the minor four key of the symphony key of F minor. And we get a three note pickup and then pizzicato strings to accompany this oboe melody by itself, which Tchaikovsky tells us should be in the mode of a song, in moda di canzona. Yeah. So, again, everybody writes in Italian. Okay. So take a listen to the MIDI play, play it mildly humorously. Anyway, lovely tune. That's all we're going to, uh, when anybody else comes in, we've already stopped by then. So here's just the tune at the beginning with its accompaniment. Just in case of the score looks like this over here. So the cello comes in playing the tune. They make some slight some slight modifications. But there it is. So the big tune. So uh is there anything I want to say about it right now? So the most interesting thing I think about this in terms of how the tune relates to the chords that go underneath it is that Tchaikovsky often uses because they're all all the chords here on the B either the the first downbeat or they happen on the second beat in some of the measures that in a lot of the measures there the the note on the downbeat isn't in the chord right so we have a B flat minor chord B flat B and F and then there's an A that resolves to B flat and same thing happens here with the G flat major chord, G flat, B flat, D, and there's an A natural, which again resolves to B flat. And so there are a bunch of these things. We'll look at them as they come. But that, um, 
it becomes kind of a, a part of the the motive or the character of the tune is that the tune often plays a dissonance or a non chord tone against the pizzicato chord. So that ends up being an important aspect of this melody and the accompaniment. So, um, let's see, I'm, tr I'm trying to decide what to do first. Yeah, okay, we're gonna analyze the tune first. So if I write it down here, we have D flat, C, B flat going into a natural B flat and then leaping up to F which repeats twice and as I said just to give you uh, an example of how this works here this A as I said is a non chord tone against the chord underneath it so I'm bolding the notes that belong so notice this pattern here of we descend a couple of notes in in steps. Then we do a, we do two of those. Then we do a lower neighbor, and then we leap up a fifth into the in, uh, that's in the chord. And then we leap down into the next chord. So then there's a a C on the downbeat, and that fits in the chord. It's an F major chord there. And then we begin another pickup gesture, E flat D C, which I'm going to put this underneath here to show how it lines up. And then that, that whole gesture um, repeats in a way. So we have da di da di da dum bum bum. So we get the A B flat C C F. So it's not exactly the same gesture, but notice we do start with a two um, two steps down, so one, two, and then a third. The first time it goes well, there are two steps and goes into the A, and then the second time we do a different set of three notes stepping down, and then we leap down a third into the same A dissonance. The B flat, as I said, was in the was in the was in the chord. There's a new chord on the C, and then we get re repeated C's, and when we leap down a fifth to F, right? So here the leap down a fourth matches the leap down a fifth. Two repeated notes, two repeated notes. And then we have our descending, no, I'm sorry, our ascending half step from A to B flat. First time it leaps up to B, uh, up to F. Second time it just steps up to C. And preceding the A natural is a descent in steps. Both of them going to A, so there's, there's a half step here, but there's a minor third here. So he's moving around this basic contour and making sled adjustments to get exactly the harmonies he wants to get to. In this case, he wants to arrive on a five chord both times. There are two F major chords under these. Okay, that's sort of the first part of the tune here. And then from there, we repeat. Then we do... We go up a scale for a while. So we repeat the F and then go up to G and A natural. And then B flat, C, D flat. Notice we got a lot of three note slurs here. And then we get, uh, we get a, we start a slur on the fourth beat, on the fourth eighth note here, which we've done a few times. We got do da 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 dee, ba da da dee da 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 dee. And here we went da 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 di da da di. So we get the slur starting in the right place, but it's a longer descent down. So E flat D C. So that gives us ba ba da 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 di di da di. And then there's dun di da di da dum. So let me write that in there. So that's B flat. Going to A, F, then G, B. I'm sorry, B, G, and then A. So this second half of the melody here goes from F, G, A. So we do two little 
scalar ascents rather than going down, and we do them in a row. Then we do a longer descent down, four notes, and then we continue down a step to the B flat, and then we go down into leaping thirds. So we're doing a third gesture here. So, I'm sorry. So I have to make sure I amend this because it is in fact a B flat here, and it is a B flat here. So excuse me for the note mistakes. That is the tonic after all. So B flat. And so that, these two lines here, make up the second half of our tune. And notice again, we end on an F major chord. So that's our five chord in our key. And guess what happens next? The opening comes back. So then we do the same opening gesture. D flat C, B flat A, G, A, B flat, F, F, C, E flat, D flat, C, A flat, B flat, C, C, F. So that's over here, it's on the next page. So there's the, that's, that is, um, so all of this happens again. So we can call this opening bit here A, and we can call the next chunk B, we can call this A. Well, it's actually literally just A again. <laughs> There's nothing that changes. And then we start with the same kind of gesture, but now we're going to do something different. So we get the F, G, A, the F, G, A, B flat, and C, but it happens slightly differently. We get F, G, A, C, B flat. I'm sorry, let me make sure I'm seeing the right pictures. So F, G, A, C, B flat. So that flipping that around gives us an appoggiatura on the C, which is going to be very important here. So then we go C, B, and B flat. And then that allows us to do something like the first bar here. So we leap up to the F and repeat it. But now that gives us a new idea that we can use here. And then that repeat leads into a, a scale down that repeats the F a third time. So we do go down four notes in the scale. So F, G, A, C, B flat, F, 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 E flat, D flat, C. And then that entire two bar gesture happens again. Um, sorry, the, yeah, this two bars here happens again. So without the pickup. But it happens, but happens down a step. So the B flat steps down, the C steps down into B flat and then this and everything is now a step lower so we get E flats so this over here so we got this two bars happens the same way but down a step in the key so we get B flat A flat E flat E flat E flat and then D flat C B flat and guess what Tchaikovsky is going to do this again because it's a, um, he starts a, a, st a statement of the third statement of the sequence. So there's A flat, G flat, D flat, D flat, D flat. And then it goes down to C, but then it goes up to D flat, to E flat. And then we get our this measure again, the F, F, E flat, D flat, C, B flat, those five notes there, and that ends the tune. And that goes to there. So notice that extended section here, this much longer uh, B prime, as it were, because it starts with the same kind of gesture, da 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 dee dum, versus the da 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 dee 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 da 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 da. So the descending gesture from the first half of the, from the first time this B section appears, 
this kind of descending scalar thing that that comes back as a, a motive to expand upon in the second half so notice that gives us a couple of times a very much longer scale of six notes from e F down to A flat and then E flat down to G flat then we just scale back up and scale back down so that's opening gesture there the the leaping up a fifth that happens in the very first bar becomes a part of this gesture as well so <clears throat> so this big long melodic sequence remember that the sequence is a a pattern that a pattern that repeats with new notes so which is exactly what I was referring to before so this descending by st uh, we we descend a step leap up a fifth repeat three times and then descend the scale that happens the same thing but down a step and then it happens the same way down a step but it and the end changes so the sequence gets interrupted after the C here so that's a very important part of this way the tune works and what that enables Tchaikovsky to do so the way we normally count phrases if we're counting like the lengths of phrase bits the normal way we count is that any kind of pickup is part of measure zero so this is measure one and this is measure two and this is measure three and then the downbeat here is the arrival of measure four so this is a four bar phrase that gets us to so my original a is four measures long mainly because this is one this is two this is three and then this is four and then the fga is the pickup to the next set of measures which is da 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 di da da di that's one da da di da that's two da da di da and then da so that's another four bar phrase again making it more like a song right having regular phrase lengths makes it more like a song in terms of it's part of the like dance music a song and it's sort of simplest concept is something that would have this regular rhythmic feel of number of measures that you would the amount of time that you would pass in each little chunk at least that's the idea and then then the tune happens again so we get guess what there's the pickup and then one two three four we cadence on four melodically four bars long then we do a pickup and then this is one one da 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 dee da that's two bars da 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 dee da that's two more bars that's four total da 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 that's six and then da da dee da dum and so that means that this this return of b the sequence lengthens this last section to eight measures so there's an extra four bars in the length of this music. That's nice. So what I want you to, I'm gonna play the music again. I want you to listen for that structure. So notice that the three bar pickups belong to the next thing. So think of it as like da di da one da 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 two da di da three da 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 four da 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 one da da and if you can count one, two, three, four along the way, you'll get what we're going for. Here it is. so that four every four bar kind of idea and then when we're extending it we just add an extra four that gives it a sort of more relaxed regular feel there's nothing interrupting that 
sensation. So. So then from there, we want to examine how this melody relates to the harmony. So here we go. Here's the chord. So as I said before, this is a B flat major triad. And so if I wanted to write in the Roman numerals here, I need to actually have some text Okay, style. Here it is. Okay, so we'll call this minor one, and then we'll make it real big, real big. Okay, so excuse me, this is a B flat minor triad. So let me make that also very big. So conceptually, the pickup to this tune, because it arrives on the downbeat on this lower neighbor thing, so I'm going to call this a, I'm going to put neighbor tone here just to label the kind of non-chord tone it is. If you want me to, I can do the next, the next fancy thing that they would teach you some version of in the, in the class, which is I can make, I can put it in parentheses. <laughs> Then, um, okay, that's slightly too big, okay. So, so that conceptually then, because we know we're in B flat now, it makes sense that this B flat C, uh, D flat C, B flat, it would make sense here for this to be also a non-chord tone. So let me, so that's a passing tone. Then here, so we get one, and then as I said before, this is an F major chord, and so this is five. It's not what I wanted, it's not how I wanted to do it. This is what I wanted. Okay. And so here, notice that the melody does C, D, C, E flat, D flat, C. So the D flat ends up being a passing tone, and then this E flat pushes us into F7 territory. All right. Then on the next downbeat, we get G, B flat. So that's a G flat major triad. And so that's our good friend uh, six. And as I've been doing in other episodes, when we're in minor, I'm putting a flat in front of the six to just signal that this is the lowered six scale degree in comparison to B flat major. Okay. Then the next half of the bar has E flat, G, um, E flat, B flat, E flat, and G flat. And that's an E flat minor triad. But guess what? Tchaikovsky's not helping you because Oh, I should say that that A natural, as I said before. So that there is a, yeah. Do I have a fancy term for that? No, so this is an appoggiatura. So if we leap into it and then step away in the opposite direction, that becomes an appoggiatura. And so the B flat's a part of the chord, but here there's a C in the melody. So instead of being an E flat, minor triad, E flat, G flat, B flat, we have a C half diminished seventh chord. So that's, the, there we go, C half diminished seven. And so there's a different bass, it's E flat on the bottom, so this is our good friend two half, uh, two, yeah, it's that noise, it's this noise, two half diminished six five, and that goes to, after that, A five triad. Right, so you get the basic idea here. So this is an F major triad that's five. Then we go down to D flat major, which is, um, of all the things in the world, that's a three chord. No, it's not a three chord, I'm sorry. It's a B flat, F, there's B flat. So this is just one, but it's a one six chord, B flat minor. 
the C's a passing tone. And then we have C, E flat, G, B flat. So then here there's another version of our two half diminished, but it's in root position this time. And then we get five, F, A, C, and F, A, and C, and five here. And then this is a chord that whenever I was teaching this melody, because this is the only thing that was beyond my student's capability, was I just put a big X under this because I didn't want them to try to figure out what that is. And I will come back to it momentarily. So from here, we start again and we get the same progression because the melody is the same up to about there. So and then we get our one six again. And now here starts the circle of fifths that I talked about earlier. So in a circle of fifths progression in B flat minor, what we would expect is so we would expect one followed by four, followed by seven, let me put the flat there, by three, I should have done the same with, with the three chords, <laughs> putting the flat there. So just the, the diatonic three. I'll be I'll be this kind here. So built on the subtonic seven, that is the lowered seven scale degree, then three, and then six, and then two, and this is our good friend half diminished. Um, there it is. Then five, um, and then, well, it'll probably be a seven. So let's just put two diminished, five, one. That would be the circle of fifths progression in B flat minor. So let's give you what the chords would be. So that would be B flat minor followed by E, um, B flat minor, followed by, I went the wrong direction in my head. Oh, yeah, I'm oh, sorry. E flat, E flat minor, and then A flat major, and then D flat major, and then G flat major. That's six. And then we would need to go around, and then we have, this would be the C diminished chord, and F major followed by B flat minor. Notice that A naturals only happen for the five chord. Everything else is regular, the accidentals that fit the key signature. So here's what we actually get. So we get E flat minor. So that's our good friend four. And this is A flat dominant seven. So that's our seven seven chord. Again, that's the flat seven thing that I've done before. I'm kind of speeding through this because I want to make sure I get to something. Okay, then D flat is, uh, is the correct chord. So that's our three triad. And then we have our G flat. This is another seven chord. Here what happens to be the uh, major seven chord, G, G flat, B flat, D and F. And then we get our C, and this is a C half diminished seven chord, our good friend C half diminished seven again. And here's our five, excuse me, <laughs> five, and then one. So guess what? That's pretty much that exactly what it is. But notice here that this section of the melody, that we get a, a dissonance on the downbeat of the one chord. This is an appoggiatura. Da, 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 da. So if I play it, let me just play it. Actually, I can just have this make noise. So dissonance here. So there's a against the, and then the next one. So this, the C is a, C is an appoggiatura. This is a suspension, the F here. Then the A flat seven, this B flat is a passing tone. And then the E flat here is also a suspension against the D flat major triad. Then this A flat is also a passing tone against the G flat dominant, the G flat major seven chord. Then the E C half diminished seven, this D flat here is another suspension. And then the F here is actually a chord tone. Right, and if we wanted to call it 5-7, there's that E flat there for us, but this is 
the D is definitely a pass. D flat is definitely a passing note. So notice that on each beat here, that during the circle of fifths progression, the Tchaikovsky is making the a moment of the chord until the very end. And he's increasing the tension on all of the downbeats here to give it a, you know, there's alternating suspensions with generally passing tones. It's a, an appositor on the first time. So, so I just want to play that section here. So listen to this and listen for the, the, the way that the downbeat is always dissonant against the chord. So, lovely. Now the, uh, I just want to make sure I review what the heck's going on here. So at this moment, the notes that are happening are D flat, G natural, B flat, and F. So this is a G half diminished seventh chord. going to 5, going to F. But the D flat's on the bottom. So what's happening here is that Tchaikovsky is inserting a play goal motion in between these two 5 chords. So if we treat F as the tonic. This is a two of five. So so it's like he's inserting a little plagally kind of moment to emphasize that we've gotten to the end of the first half of the tune and the next thing that's going to come back is uh, the beginning again. So this is a way to emphasize that I've kind of moved a little bit to the dominant. So this is another way of, this is a more late 19th century version of using a, um, <clears throat> uh, doing something like a secondary dominant near the, uh, near the um, halfway point of a melody. So like when the first two phrases modulate to the dominant, this is a similar technique but using a plagal motion instead of a, um, a secondary dominant function. It's into a dominant one. So going into do going a dominant too far, instead we've gone a plagal too far in the dominant. Yeah, so for the dominant. So sounds lovely. I'm going to play the whole thing one more time, and then I'm going to move on to the Brahms. Yay! Okay, so now on to the Brahms. So uh, Brahms has a very nice, lovely, intense slow movement for the second movement, and then this lighter, still Brahms, um, what he calls uh, the Allegretto grazio, Grazioso, so a gracious Allegretto, if you like. Um, but it's quasi andantino, so he wants it a little, does that mean, yeah, it's a little slower. So uh, Brahms likes to, instead of writing scherzos sometimes, he likes to write what I would call basically our intermez, me, intermezzi, intermezzos. So um, that's, there, there's a lot of piano pieces with this name by Brahms, intermezzo. And uh, so, and they have this general kind of um, more relaxed, feeling uh, but alongside some complicated things it's all the light Brahms piano pieces that this is going to 
there's it's reminiscent of it's Brahms but uh, so it's an intermezzo you know in between piece so sort of plays a similar role in Brahms's music to uh, what a minuet or a scherzo would be for earlier composers so I've written out this first section, and then there are four more fleet-footed scherzo passages that play the role of the uh, the B section, like the trio of a minuet or a scherzo. So he's doing what you would normally expect in terms of larger form things. So take a listen. And then the fast music that plays with the same um, basic melodic idea. Playing some wrong notes, but basic same melodic idea. So so notice the orchestrational choice here of so we do have pizzicato uh, cello doing lots of uh, the cello section doing lots of arpeggios. And then there are kind of repeated notes with some movement in the uh, clarinets and bassoons with an, uh, an oboe melody. Uh, the flutes will come in a little bit, and they'll, uh, one of the horn players will play. That'll hap happens along the way. So the important thing, let me see, what do I want to get at here? So the important rhythmic idea that's happening here is that Brahms is still by writing music in three. It's he likes to play with where you think the most important beat in the measure is. So it's not always clearly the first beat. So for example, in this first bar, everybody's playing in the first two measures an accent on the last beat of the measure. So it's not bum bum ba dum. It's bum bum ba dum bum bum ba dum. Right? Everybody plays more emphasized the third beat for two bars. And then in the third bar, it's like the accents go away, but the fourth bar. They play da da ya ba ba be bump so that triplet, and there's the he has diminuendos underneath the triplets, but he did, the implication here since it seems to all still be in piano is that you're actually going to play that the you're going to play the first note louder and diminuendo away rather than get softer than the original dynamic here, so and that comes back two bars later, and then two bars after that. We start emphasizing the second beat by playing the second beat long, like it's some sort of baroque dance, you know, bump, ba, dee, bump. So the, there's a there's a kind of baroque dance that you, when you emphasize the second beat and the generally slow, it's called a saraband. So, in three, emphasize two, bum, 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 bum. Rather than three one three one, you do one two three one two three, right? So he's making himself he's making that available to him, and then this section of the melody really does start emphasizing the second beat. So ya ba ya ba di di da di da di da bum ba da di da 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 da. So this emphasis on the every other beat, on the second beat, and then he starts doing kind of two note gestures here. 
and doing moving across grouping the measures in two into two by having every half note be an important note notice that that's happening here we have three one two and then keeping going so he's playing with now he's been playing with which beat in the measure that you emphasize then he's deciding that he's going to make every other beat be important so that you're thinking it sound of sounds like it's in two instead of three and then he's going to make it even more complicated by having the oboe start doing every other on every other doing quarters this way so you're getting constant syncopation on top of this melody that's often emphasizing the second beat right so this rhythmic layering and complexity that's one of the things that makes Brahms Brahms so this is just constantly happening in this music so it's there's a constantly shiftingness and he constantly wants it to be a little to be gracioso so it's a little the the cognate we would have is gracious but so it's it's light it's lighter so it's don't not taking itself too seriously but it is Brahms so everyone's going to take it too seriously including yours truly I mean I'm sitting here analyzing it like you know down to the finest detail so um, and then we sort of wind that down notice the horn now is playing that rip uh, the, the the syncopation here and then the tune comes back by the way I notated the the fermata over the bar line I just let it stop for a whole measure just so that I could get the I could get the notation software to do something that would sound like a performance rather than whatever it would do with a fermata over a bar line. I didn't want to deal with that. So the horn keeps doing that on the pedal here. And we sort of return to the opening with some slight alt and we just and we we're doing that just to round off the tune. It passes back to the clarinets and the flutes like it did earlier, and then we get a little ending couple of gestures, and then we're back we're we're off to the races in the faster section. So now, for some actual looking at the notes, the pitches, that is. We've been looking at the notes the whole time. So, so we're in G major. So we're also in the key of four of the symphony. Which is in D. D major. So notice that we're in, in the Tchaikovsky, we're in the B, the the main key is F minor, and so we go to the key of the subdominant four, which in that instance is B flat minor. And here, since we're in G major, um, since we're in D major for the symphony, we're going to go to its subdominant four, which is G major. So, and uh, it's relatively straightforward, to be honest, um, at the beginning at least. It's, again, Brahms likes to do lots of little sly things to make his music a little bit more what's the word I'm coming for trying to uh, the word that's coming to mind has a slightly negative connotation I don't want to have a negative connotation though like it's precious right you know we're we're we're, we're uh, it's it's really well sewn as if it was a, a garment so the um, so what ends up happening is that the first two beats are a G major chord and then on that emphasized chord we're doing a very standard gesture which is to go from so we're doing two G major chords in a row, which is one. And then on, the, on beat three, we're going to go to C major over G, which is a four, six, four. And that entire thing repeats a second time in terms of the, the harmony. So what I have to do it this way because of the way I'm using this. So can I? Nope. Still learning how to how to present material while trying to use a notation system. Well, you know, I don't have a way to like just draw things. Not that my handwriting is that great, but so that happens over two bars. A one with the, the since there's a G pedal, the tonic pedal, we get four six four, and so it's just doing this. It's very common across lots of different styles of music. So then it goes back, amazingly enough, to one, to G major. So there's a G major chord here. And then on the third beat, this time, we get, with the G pedal, we get D, 
D, F sharp, A, and C. So now this time we get five with the pedal. So that's a five seven chord. So there's a D seven on top of the G pedal. I'm just gonna put G pedal. So the important thing here is that the pedal continues. So we go. Very straightforward. So then in measure four, we go back to one and it's really sort of in one the whole time. So we go back to one, a G major chord. And what's interesting is that Brahms does something kind of more, um, I had a way to explain this. Let me say, let me show, let me, sh let me, let me explain something. So he's going to do something that is a, the, the, with the triplets here, he does something that is very common. It happens in Beethoven all the time is this, um, what I'll, it's called a parallel six, three chords. So what I mean by that is that we take a chord that's in first inversion, what we would consider as first inversion. So if I took uh, say, if I had a C major chord, if I was in C major and I'd had this, this chord, what I would want to do to play, but what I want to do is have this entire chord go down a half step, go down a step in the key, and then go down another step in the key, and then go down another step in the key, and so on. So this is gonna, this would sound like this. But the reason that this doesn't tend to happen in classical period music is that the C to G creates a bunch of parallel fifths. So with the F, it's a little bit more complicated, but the A to E to the G to D, they don't like that sound. But what's interesting is that if I just take this, the fifth, I'm sorry, if I take the, the root of the chord and I put it on top, I now all of a sudden have first inversion triads and all of those fifths turned into fourths, and fourths are okay. Those are fine, we can do those. So if we have triads, we can just go. Yeah, so Beethoven loves doing that all the time. So Brahms is taking that here is just a thing to do on top of the beat here. So what he had, he had, oh, it happens to be those three notes. So. It happens to be literally the notes I wrote down. So, and he does this just on top of a G pedal. All right, so that means the last chord was just one. And so on top of that, we get four, three, two, one, but all in inversion on top of that G. So important thing I have to do is since we're in G major, there's an F sharp there. So that's a four, three, four, three, so that is, uh, it's lovely. He's combining two things together. So the parallel of six, three chords with a tonic pedal, and we get that. So you could analyze that as um, like triads, like this is a four, six, four, and this is a, this is a, a three, this is a one, seven, and then this would be two, four, two, if you like. I mean, that would uh, accurately describe what's happening. Um, it wouldn't show you that the sevenths really aren't necessarily do, might not be doing what they're supposed to in a seventh chord, but it really is that parallel um, triad on top that seems to be organizing this moment. So that's one chord, and then there's that. And from there, in the next bar here, this. So those five note, those five beats all seem to go together again. So here, this is, so the melody goes G, E, F sharp, D, G. So notice that gets us from a G chord below it. So, cause there's G, there's G, B, and D. And then underneath the, under this moment, there are two Gs and then there's a D pedal. So it seems like the fifth is also important there. And that's C, and then notice there's a C, B down here. So let's see what's... 
So this, um, do I know what I'm doing? Yes, okay, now I know what I'm doing. So there's a C and a G. That's the G pedal. And then there's also down below in the cello an A and a D. So this moment here is our good friend five below the pedal, above the pedal. Some of it's below the pedal actually. Yeah, so it's this. And so in the previous beat, there's sort of a, the feeling of a, it's like a C chord. There's some sort of predominant sound here, but all the G's seem to be. So, yeah, so the best exam, best thing I can think to call it is sort of a, yeah, so the C being an appoggiatura would make it an E minor seven chord. So that would make it, so I'm trying to figure out some logic to describe this with. Would be something like, a, that would be like a six, seven. But in the end, it's just, the important point here is that there's a kind of a predominant to dominant sound. And then the dominant gets furthered in the next beat. Actually, actually that's not true. The, so the G, so there's sort of a one, well, okay. There are like two ways that I can analyze this. I could say that the five continues because we have D, C, and A, and a D here. We could say that the G there is a pedal. And so we could call this still five that resolves to one on the second beat. Or we could say it's a, these are like, sort of like a suspending the chord, suspending a few of the notes on top of a one. I'm not gonna get into the, the, the it's gonna take me like 15 minutes to explain that particular piece of logic, and I don't wanna do that right now. So anyway, um, it basically is just like certain kind of ending chords in certain places in like Mozart or something. Where you would play the you play the the root of the chord on the downbeat and the rest of the notes are still the chord previous, and they hold over and then resolve later. So he's not doing that exactly here, but it's something like halfway in between those two things. So, in the end, still dominant E kind of, and there's a re clear resolution of the A and the C to G and B in the next beat. So we get back to one on beat two here. Another way to emphasize beat two in a certain way by making it the resolution moment. And then this whole thing repeats again from the 6-3 chords. And so Bra um, Brahms uses this, this clear, um, so although the chords are not like so obviously chords, the very clearly G major music here he uses this to help him move to the dominant by adding C sharps when the C naturals happen and moving to A in the, in the, um, that's the bassoons. So that's over here. Yeah, both bassoons play that A. So then, so we get the two beats. So this is that G major chord and this is that sort of E minor -y thing. It's clearly more E minor with the E, G here. So E, G, B, and a D, seven, so E seven. And then now that E seven becomes a two in the key of D, if you like. And then there's an A, an A, C sharp, and an F sharp chord, ooh. <laughs> and so that's a good example. So the, you have an E minor seven, going to an F sharp minor triad with an A on the bottom. And then that goes to, there's a D on the arrival point. And then that stuff above that D on the bottom, which is our new tonic momentarily. I mean, this is just sort of glimpsing. This is all stuff that makes sense in D major in the midst of G major. Is that above that D he does A G C sharp and E? So there's an A7 chord with a D on the bottom. And then that resolves to and then that resolves to a D major chord. 
So let me go through here. Yeah. So to explain something about this, so this is a good example of the thing I was describing. So we've got all the notes here of an A7 chord happening with the arrival of the D bass. And so that is partially prepared in the previous beat by the C sharp and the A in the previous chord. So there's a certain kind of sense that this D is being implied as one. It's really still, in the end, it's going to be a five because all that immediately gets canceled. Well, yeah, it only immediately gets canceled two bars later. But it's important here that he's doing something very similar to the I do two phrases of music and I hit the dominant. And I hit the dominant by emphasizing it with the, um, you know, so the sh sharp four, which is sharp four in this key is C sharp. So, so it means that on top of this momentary one is a 5-7 over a tonic pedal. And before that, then we get this. This is a what we'll call a 3-6 chord. And before that is our, that would be 2-7. So I want to talk a bit, a moment about this 3-6. So what we're trying to do, what, what Brahms is trying to do here amidst this music is he's signaling his melody by going E, F sharp, E, D. And so this is scale degree wise, that's two, two, three, two, one. And if you want to have a, if you want to do a chord progression with this that goes, that goes predominant, two do a dominant, dominant, and a tonic, with a little bit more elaborate things. In order to have, so that's gonna give you a bass something like E to A to A to D. So that gives us this. And so, so the easiest harmonization of this would be two, two, condensed six, four, to five seven or something to one. So let me let me play that. And knee on top. Oh so I need to go up, I'm sorry. I have the capability of doing this. Yeah, so here we go. So there's an E minor set, E minor triad. And then I want a D set, D. And so what Brahms does here to make this more complicated is he puts a D here that gives us our um, D on the bottom, which gives our five sound. And so that gives us that arriving too soon D on the bottom. It's not too soon, it's happening on beat one, but since we've been emphasizing beat two, we don't want the chord to resolve until the next beat. So that's why we're getting this overlap of D and an A7 chord. And then, but he wants it to be more interesting than this. And so the secondary option of instead of a cadential six four is to make this chord into a kind of three, which you have F and F sharp and A, that means the middle note here, instead of being a D, ends up being a C sharp. And so you get something like, so that's our two, and then here's our, and then. So, what he does is so that C sharp gets held over. So it's like he's he pre he preloads the C sharp when the F sharp shows up. Because the F sharp, the C sharp is the resolution of the D that makes this two into a two seven chord. So that's the logic of this 
how you get the three six chord is the since you wanted to arrive on you wanted the chord to resolve on beat two over here you wanted to have that take place and so it means that we want the five seven chord to happen here but we want the d to come at the same time so i means i need some dominant feel before this but i don't want but I want the dominant feel to be, doesn't make sense to do a cadential 6-4 on beat three of a bar. So let's do three as a dominant function chord, which is that's what this is. Because you can write music that does, just goes that F sharp minor with an A on the bottom. So if I went from me, do, sorry, let's play the right notes. That's the gesture here, but we're just inserting an A7 chord in between with the bass. So, me, so this is me. Yeah, me. And I don't know about you, but that three chords in a row sounds like Brahms to me, just generalized Brahms. If Brahms was like a, an idea of the way music sounded, it's that three chords in a row. An F, F sharp minor chord with the A on the bottom, and then an A7 with a D below it, and then resolve into a D triad. That sound, among other things. So I have run out of time for today, but um, let me just say a little bit about what some of the stuff that happens later is that, so then that gets reinterpreted with C naturals as a D minor seven two chord. That goes to, I'm sorry, that goes, I'm sorry, the, an A minor seven, that it becomes a two in the main key, so we're back in G major. And there's a five. And then there are a lot of F naturals here because he's emphasizing, um, he wants to emphasize the C major chord we've seen before. So G7 to C. And then he uses a very lovely augmented six chord with B flat and D sharp to emphasize A to move to D minor. So we're getting D minor flavors. And then that immediately pu pushes back to C and back to, and then we do go through that same chord progression a second time into D minor. And then that, he slowly moves from D minor through a couple of things to a D, D7 harmony that actually ends with a D9 sonority with the E in the clarinet. And then the tune comes back with the same sort of steps, but we pivot to G minor through repetition. G major, then G minor, and then G major, and then G minor. And then, then we slam into an E flat major chord, which is the flat six, go back to one as minor one, and then we do just one in a six four inversion, so it's very similar to the E flat. E flat, G, B flat, and then G flat and B flat. Then D, G, D, G, and B, so a major one chord, and G major. So all that harmonic slyness. So take a listen to this whole thing one more time, and I will take a break. Lots of stuff in here. Lovely, lovely. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes and I'll come back and talk about uh, Beethoven 1 some more as we go our very slow, very deliberate tour through it, kind of bar by bar analysis. I'll be back in two or three minutes.
Hello, hello. I'm back. So now we're going to pivot to Beethoven. I usually do this before I do that. So let's see here. We've got this. So in the meantime, uh, thank you for the comments. Hello. Uh, person calling themselves Small Nugget. And I'm glad that I'm you're learning a lot, Ian. It's good to hear. So I need to find some things. So this score here. And then I need to go to my drive here. Go to this. Okay. All right. And I need one more document. All right, so the I got to yesterday to I got to the big G major cadence at the end of this big long G minor -y section, and then so we got to right there. So I was deciding at the end of thinking about if I wanted to do if I wanted to write something that's like this section right now sort of distill it down and write something similar to this, or do I want to continue and write something longer? So I think the thing to do at this point, because this section is so juicy, that the thing to do is to write something like it to show people how, um, how to deal with such a specific kind of writing that Beethoven's doing here. So let me, I'm gonna play this section and we will move on from here. If you have any questions or something, let me know in the comments. I, I try to keep track of them. I'm not very good at it right now. But if you're watching this live or afterwards, write something. I'll see if I can answer any questions or address anything that you're wanting to know. Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna play the music back from just where it gets loud right before this section. So right here. So I, I spent some time writing this in, so <laughs> so I just wanted to get to this cadence here. Okay, so the so I need to distill some of this down into basic ideas here. So so we have here below. So we've got the uh, cello bass. Uh, continuously moving line and um, we end up getting a big circle of fifths progression if I remember correctly um, let's see it went we did that oh yeah I, I copied to that was me rewriting some of it yeah, no, it doesn't do a big complete one, but it starts that way. So it starts with a circle of fifths, then does a lot of a lot of um, ascending chromatic sliding. So that's basically going up a half step. And that's enabling this pattern I have up here of like a two seven going to a five seven of. So that pattern where we have a chord that's stable and the bottom voice, which is playing the third of the chord, just moves up a half step to emphasize the next note. That is a very important aspect of this music. We have a just a quarter note, a quarter note repeated pitches, repeated notes in upper strings. 
and then the winds just supply kind of a slower counter melody than uh, just chords to lead to uh, the flip back to major and the uh, big cadence. So this section begins with a big PAC in G major and ends with a big PAC that is a perfect authentic cadence in G major. And um, I'm going to make sure I just write this down right now. Perfect authentic cadence. So if you're not familiar with the American term uh, usage of this term, what we mean here is that there's a there's a um, basically a G or a G7 chord with G on the bottom goes to a C or goes to a C triad, major triad, uh, major or minor triad with C on the bottom. And the melody ends on C as well. So a good example of that would be the outer voices would basically be this and that. So that's the basic requirement. Um, the inner voices could be something like we could have the melody be B to C and then we would have an F to E for that would make it 5-7. So something like this. Could also be something like this. I just replaced the F with an E, an F with a D. So that's a basic idea. We could also have D go to C. And then in more complicated examples, we could have an E go to C and just so it doesn't it's basically the melody ends on C, the bass the lowest note ends on C, and then there's a root position G chord before it of some kind. There's a G on the bottom. And that gives us our PAC. So and that's what I'm when I say PAC, that's what I mean. So this thing it seems to be it's the most final of our cadences. It's the most most clear way to round up a large section of a piece of music. And if you do it a row in a row a bunch of times, even better. All right. So yeah. So the, they just have longer chords to accompany this. Um, it's also important here that this. Um, so we've done a flip to uh, the parallel minor after the big first after a big K, a big PAC and there's much less texture meaning fewer instruments are playing yeah anything else um, this is actually the softest dynamic we've seen so far in the sim in the symphony so far is there hasn't been a pianissimo yet and this is the first time we've seen it. So now I am, is there anything else I want to mention? This is basically it. Okay, so here we go. I am gonna write something reminiscent of this. So this is the last thing I wrote, right? Yeah, I didn't like that particularly. Um. I did like this music. You have to go watch previous episodes to know what any of this stuff is. <laughs> but here's so here is my here is my mimicking of the opening of the fast section. scroll all the way. I'm just going to make something up brand new here. So let's, because I didn't like that option. 
All right, let's pick a key out of nowhere here. We'll do A major today. And um, let's go back to that 3-4 thing. All right, this is weird. Why did it do it that way? Okay, so because I had it highlighted the wrong way. So let's get rid of you. I'll get rid of you. All right, so um, this is going to be the... The, as if it is the key of the dominance, so it's the key signature that would match this section. So, okay, so we've got A major music, and I'm going to flip to A minor. So let me give a let me write a big cadence in. Let me write a big. Uh, we'll do a um, we'll do an. Um, let's do a two as well. Okay, so this is going to be uh, something like two cadence six four five one, one chord per beat. Um, so let's have the melody go. Let's let's have it descend by step here. I'll do it up there too. I'll write that in later. So a, a B, a C sharp, and a D. Will the D work? Yep, that'll work. So this will give me a. I need to have a different tempo now because I want this to be fast. What did I oh, what did I use for that other tempo? That would be perfect. Not that, not that, not that, not that, not that, not that. It's this, yes, that. Dot a quarter equals seventy-two. So you're going away. Ah. Okay, let's, let's, let's do that. Paste. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have it be loud. And and we'll um, have let's harmonize this. So I need a seventh of this will be a D going down to a C. I'm going to have this happen up an octave as well. This will be with the basses. We'll make that happen. They have that E. Yes, they do. It's the lowest note on a double bass down there. Um, So that'll be them, and then the violas will be, let's have them do some harmonization here. So we want, I want a two something, so I want D, B, D, and F sharp. So we'll have them do F sharp. This would be just gonna be Kadesha 6-4. So this, this will be that. Actually, what I'm going to do is have the second violins go up. Bum, 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 bum. So then the woodwinds will just be versions of the, I'm just going to have something loud over here, too. So the bassoons can do that. Let's have the bassoons do an octave up, too. And then the, if I was going to have flutes, they'll do, they'll double that. And then I'll have this. They'll, they'll collapse on that. And then we'll have oboe play an F. And then it's F and then there's D. Yeah, that'll be enough. Okay. Did I want another voice? Yeah, I want a, like an A voice. What am I missing here? I've got D, B, D, D, and F sharp. Let's have an A voice play A here. Yeah, so here we go. So that's a uh, that's a two six five connection six four five seven one in the key of A major. Bum, 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 da, 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 da. So now I'm going to do a similar texture as before. So we're going to have um, we're going to have them go to C minor, A minor immediately. So those will be the upper strings.
So I'm writing an A minor now. So I'm going to do an A7 here. I'm sorry. Uh, um, I want to push to the four chord. So which I'm pushing to A minor four would be D minor. So I want D minor. I don't want to do the immediate, the, the way that I've set this up, it doesn't make sense to do this immediately. So let me, let me take this and move it one bar over and then you stop with a quarter note there and then the rest of that goes away. So it'll be something like this and this would be piano. I don't want the, I'm going to have everybody do this up an octave. So I'm not like, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a dominant seventh chord there. So, because I need, this is, this is still supposed to be that. And then this will be. So it is a dominant seventh chord already. Um, okay. So then I'm going to do this same gesture on F. So in order for that this to work, I need this to begin on. I need this to be the reverse, meaning doing C B A. C natural. Yeah, that'll work. And then I'm going to take this whole idea and I'm going to transpose this down a fifth. So it'll be a D minor chord. And oh yeah, so I have the C sharp there. So I need just need an F sharp here. So the, I'm going to make this into, uh, this is going to become an, an E, an E minor, an E major chord, so that I have a five there. And then this will become an A major triad. C sharps are in key signatures, so there are friends. Yeah. And then this is going to happen down a perfect fifth. this into a G minor so I need a D major triad here okay so here's this
based on the rate at which this piece is going, it's actually two bar phrases. So there I need, I need an extra bar before that comes in. So notice that the they're pushing up and they're pushing down. That's going to cause me some problems. Um, so what I'm going to do is have them revoice here. So that means this would go down there. And then that would, uh, oh cool. I didn't know that would happen. Oh, that's interesting. Shouldn't I just be able to click? Okay, there it is. I don't click on the note itself. Hmm, that's interesting. So we're gonna go young, and then this is gonna all go up an octave. So we're gonna leap by six. So we get the resolution right, and then we leap to make it fit in a more closer texture. Okay, here, and I'm gonna break the pattern because this is, I've already gotten us into so we're in A minor, and then we've pushed to D minor, and we push to G minor, and this will this would push us all the way to C minor, um, which is pretty far away from A major. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna have this slip down to E natural here instead of E flat, and then um, what I'm going to have this do is kind of slowly wind its way up a couple of chromatic steps to get to I don't know do I want to what key do I want to get to here let's get let's 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 get up to F sharp minor so this E natural and so I'm going to do a version of this rhythm but do the chromatic half steps down here so we'll get the D sharps below. Yeah, let's do that. So that would be um, either F natural. Yeah, we're gonna do E double E sharp and D double sharp for my just to make everybody's brains explode. I need this to be that. Oops. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we do that, and these two notes become R E double D double sharp to E, and then, and I could have just done it as F natural. I don't want to. Okay, then we get rid of the tie. Okay, and this is the opportunity for me to use. Um, so this is going to be like a C sharp minor chord or something. Ugh. Wow. Really? Hmm. Let's put the C sharp minor chord there, and I'll get there somehow. Um, we'll make it C dom seven, and so. Um, And so uh, the resolution here would be to C major. Okay. Oof. That's a little bit too brusque for my liking. Hmm. Let's make it E minor, is that would be so weird? That's not too bad. That works. Okay, so I went from G minor to E minor. G7. So G E minor. Yeah, that's fine. So it means that I can do ah, let's make it E E that so that and then I'm gonna take out the D there. 
Here, so let's leave the D in. That should be interesting. How did I get winded in my bag? Where back to G natural, G natural there. I need to get round back to is a five chord in my original key. So that's E. I need to get to E natural. Okay. So. I don't like what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, that didn't work. I was trying to do like a D minor -y thing to get there. So what if I just delete this and just have that happen? And that would be when the G sharp resolves to A and they wrote that resolves to A. So that would be a D there. Don't want to go to G natural. Okay, so we're gonna to have to go to G sharp here. So, oh well, the solution would be just to continue this pattern up. Bum 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 bum. Oh, that's the solution. This will wind me back around to E. So here, this is going to be, we're going to make this into a B7 chord. And so then this can be, yeah, there you go. Oh, that's why. Can't do that because it's down here. So this would be the. <sighs> so we take out that note and it would be up here. That would be the solution. And then this would be the natural. And what? Um, so I'm doing it too far, so this needs to be an A minor triad. It's emphasizing, oh, okay, here. Let's do it this way instead.
So what I want to avoid here is that this this D major is causing me problems. So let's make it. This is the B7. And that'll solve. Ooh, interesting. Um, Making up a melody to go as a kind of counter to this. the reason is that it's G natural to G sharp right there. So let's have this be up here is uh, solution is just to do this. <laughs> So this is having the fourth scale degree do that, and I don't like that, so...
Eh. It's got parallel actors there that I don't like. But I'm not gonna worry about that right now. All right, here we go. So, now to explain what the heck I've been doing for the past, I don't know, 10 minutes. Okay, so I set up, uh, so I set this up with a, this is a B minor 7 over D. Can you read that? Barely. Okay. Let's, let's, okay, the solution is just to zoom way in. View, zoom. Okay, so there's a B7 chord here. There's A's. I did a prepared A there. And this moves to a um, A over E chord, which then moves to an, e, um, an E7, which then goes to A. So in Roman numeral land, Um, this would be uh, two, two six five. Excuse me. Um, that's my good friend. Cadential six four five seven one. And then it immediately flips to A minor for two chords. So the assumption here is there's an extra bar of. Um, pick up to this you know bum, 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 bum. so it's because it's the every six it's fast enough that every two bars is really one big six eight measure or something like that one uh, one six two measure so it does a minor and on top of this aim so when the a minor comes in so the melody comes in playing may redo so that's three two one so the B is a passing tone, and this is I'm borrowing this rhythm from that faster three uh, music that I listened to earlier. So I wanted this rhythm as a kind of the thing that would make this sound interesting. And so what I wanted is a um, to go through the circle cycle circle of fifths in the same direction Beethoven went at the beginning. So he went from one to four to seven to three. So, um, but I'm I'm emphasizing the key more because of how I've written this tune. So there's a so the A minor happens still here, 
And then I what I did is I made a five, and this would this is the seventh of the chord here, so there's a five seven, which then goes back to one, and then that becomes a five seven of four at the end of the bar. So the A major over G. So A7 over G chord. And then that goes from this A minor sound here to a to the four chord, which is D minor. Okay. And then so we get then we get the fun so then it's like I've modulated. Beethoven moves too quickly through the chords for there to be like a modulation. He doesn't dominantize them at all. But here, oh, interesting. Uh, apparently I'm not either. No, I am. That's right. So then that goes back to, so this bar here is again five, seven of four, and it returns to four. And then it's gonna do the same pattern. So this is, so this is a seven. I'm gonna just take out the over G here. Goes back to D minor. And then we get, so then we get D seven over G, which is then a five seven of that flat seven chord. That's seven. So that is the G minor triad. Sorry, it's a D7 over C, which is going to go to G minor. And so I'm being cruel by having it go to the flat 7 key. So, but I didn't make it major. And that was the, that would be the thing to do if I wanted it to sound more like a classical period piece. So let me fix, that's, that's why I was having problems getting back around this G minor passage. It's supposed to be, this, this should be in G major. Okay, that'll make everything make a little bit more sense. So let's listen to a G major. That makes more sense. Okay, so I, I did something a little bit more late romantic in flavor. So so then this goes to that seven chord G here in seven G major. And so then we get our five seven of excuse me. We get our oh that's why I selected them both. Over. So then we get that this happening again. So this is our D7 going to G and then this becomes a G7 here and this is like when Beethoven has that F major chord going to D7 I'm, I'm taking a lot longer to get there um, so this okay so this becomes a I'm gonna have a, a deceptive resolution of this chord here well, it's not. I mean, it doesn't really function as a G7 because I have it go to an E minor seven chord, which is just going down a third. So that's going to, that's our good friend minor five. Yeah, minor five seven. Yeah. Okay, so I could I could just flip it right there. So I could have it do that. Yeah, that's actually better. Okay. So, um, so then, so this is um, E7, which I'm gonna have, um, let's have that be that, and that'll be, there's the deceptive resolution of this E7 chord. So this is a, um, this is a seven of this is a C sharp uh, C sharp dominant seventh chord so this is a five of six and this would be a pretty straightforward um, five, this is actually functioning it's five six five of six so this is F sharp minor over E sharp I'm sorry F sharp dominant seven so C sharp dominant seven over E sharp 
and then I have it instead of going to six because <laughs> I'm mean um, it goes up to another dominant seventh chord um, in this case it's a five seven of a five that is a five four three of five um, so that's a this is a b7 over f sharp and then that goes to a G, that goes to our E major triad, and that's just five. So I'm, this is a deceptive resolution of our E7 by having the, so the seventh resolves and the, the leading tone resolves, but um, I don't have the inner voices. By keeping the inner, the inner voices the same, uh, that's a kind of deceptive resolution. And then this is functioning like a 5-7 of the next thing, which happens to be 5 of 5. And again, the resolution here happens, but instead of having the B resolve, it holds on and becomes the root of something. This is like something out of the Amy Beach that I that I showed like in the second episode. And then, um, or might have been the first one even. Um, and then this is our minor 1. And then this is 5, which becomes 5-4-2. And we start again. So then this is all the stuff we've seen before. So this is our A minor one. This is um, so this is minor one going to five, going to minor one, five of four to minor four to that's still um, and so this is where it starts to change. So let me go back and grab all the information from before. So this, 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 this. Uh huh. Okay, so then this four chord, um, I don't have it go to minor four, but I have it go to major four, because either one works. It's still a D chord. We're expecting D minor because of what I did before, but we get a D major harmony. And so that D major harmony allows me to wind back around to A major, which is what Beethoven did. And so then this D major chord uh, becomes a B minor chord, and that's just two. Um, and then I get uh, this is the this is the A major over E chord, which is a um, that's our cadential six four, which is functioning like that. And then we get and then this is a E seven harmony, which goes to five seven. And then this is just one with an arpeggio. All right, and then that's just A. So there you go. So um, I did some dastardly tricks to get away from G and back to E in a couple of bars. Beethoven just juxtaposes the chords right next to each other. So a G major triad with an E major triad right next to each other, E dominant seventh chord. He has F and D7, but it's the same relationship. Um, so I inserted a couple of more chromatic, more chromatic E chords. Okay, so that solves the problem here of this G sharp. Um, when I fix this harmony here, um, does that mean I can do that? No, the problem here is this A, B, C. Um, hmm. Let's do it this way instead.
I'm trying to come up with something better, but it's not it's just not coming today. And that's okay. And we're just gonna we're gonna back away and move on with our lives. Okay, so uh, take a listen through this all the way through here. Did I make any changes in that? Did I need to be nope. Okay. So notice the the basic pattern that I'm following with what Beethoven did here. So the A major, the section in A minor with low strings, with low strings taking the melody. We repeated notes in the upper strings, some melodic stuff that would be what the woodwinds would be doing, and then. Um, the melody winds its way uh, toward the flat side that is going um, going down uh, going down fifths rather than up fifths so instead of going from C to G to D I'm going C to F to B flat that's the equivalent of what I'm doing here from A to D to G and then winding my way chromatically back up to get back to the dominant and then restarting and then, then I use the the moving back to um, then that moving down enables me to start winding way up to A major and then the winds expand as I write a cadence and it's another PAC in A major Let's, I'm going to make one more change. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. Okay. So. All right. So uh, next time we'll be uh, analyzing the up and coming, the next, I'll be entering the next section of the score into uh, my notation software here. And so we'll hopefully, we should get to the end, we should be able to get to the end of the, um, should get to the end of the exposition. And we can look at the code, uh, the closing material and the stuff that happens here at the end so that it can wind back away to the um, beginning of the sonata form, the fast section, or move on to the development. And that'll probably take a couple of days. So. Unless there's anything else. Nope, there's nothing else going on here. So I hope you all have a lovely day. This has been Music Corner episode 16. I'm David Kulma. Have a great rest of your Thursday. I believe that's what it is. Yes. Bye-bye.